Hello and welcome back to CEO.ca's Inside the Boardroom. My name is James Fetham and today I'm joined by George Reed, Senior Vice President of Corporate Development at Star Diamond Corporation. They trade on the TSX under the ticker DIAM. George, it's great to see you today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. So if we could kick things off with a bit of a history of Star Diamond. Uh, I know you mentioned to me that you've been at the company since 2003, or you had an association with the project since then. Uh, could you walk us through maybe some of the, the key developments in that time and, and what the company's focused on now? So I joined the company in uh, 2003, October 2003. At that time, Star had elected to to sink a shaft into the, the Star Kimberlite to recover a bulk sample. At that time, the company was known as Shore Gold Inc., which we shouldn't lose sight of. The, the company changed its name to Star Diamond Corporation in 2018. Um, I joined the company, and within two weeks, we entered the Kimberlite. It was a very exciting time. Uh, we took out a substantial bulk sample once we had 3,000 or over 3,000 carats. We then published a dollar per carat valuation, which was $135 a carat, which was well ahead of the world average, which at that time was about $80 a carat. So it put us in a good position. And um, uh, quite shortly after that, we did a deal with N Newmont, who became a participant in the project and gained a 40% interest and assisted us in the development of the underground. Uh, we have done very extensive work, uh, underground bulk sampling, large diameter drilling, and core drilling to define the, the shape, size, and internal structure of this kimberlite. We've recovered a lot of diamonds, over 15,000, over 150,000 diamonds, 15,600 and something carats, um, all greater than one millimeter in size. So we have a very substantial parcel of diamonds particularly from the Star and Orion South Kimberlites. These Kimberlites are in the Fort Alicorn Forest of central Saskatchewan. It is a very accessible area. The forest is road accessible uh, 365 days of the year. Maybe a bit of snow plowing required in the winter, but certainly we can get in and out all the time. We are 20 kilometers off paved highway and 20 kilometers off the power grid. So a very favorable position for a f the future development of a diamond mine. Uh, the project has undergone an extensive history. A lot of work, as I said, has already been done. We published a feasibility study in 2011. And on the back of that, we did an environmental impact assessment and we got approval from both the federal government and the provincial government on that EIS. So the project has gone through many hurdles. In 2017, we entered into an option to joint venture agreement with Rio Tinto. They had the uh, an innovative idea to use a trench cutter bulk sampling tool to recover an additional Kimball uh, sample from starting with the star kimberlite and then they had visions of enlarging this program onto the adjacent orion south kimberlite um, this machine can recover a very large sample in a relatively short time it has a bit that is rectangular in shape it cuts a hole that is 3.2 meters by 1.5 meters a rectangular hole it gets down to 250 meters below surface. It should be remembered that these kimberlites, which are huge in their aerial extent, are buried underneath 100 and more meters of overburden. So we first had to get through the overburden and then sample the kimberlite. However, this pro process that Rio Tinto embarked on, this was the first time a machining of this magnitude had been developed for bulk sampling. It proved to be very successful, and they recovered a substantial uh, bulk sample of diamonds from 10 of these trench cutter holes located in the vicinity of the underground development on Star, 
so that we could confirm the grade in the lateral uh, component as well as in the vertical from the top of the kimberlite down to 250 meters below surface. Um, associated with this equipment, they also um, built a new bulk sample plant uh, with a state-of-the-art uh, flow sheet. The flow sheet used a Tomra XRT sorter to recover the diamonds between 6 and 25 millimeters, and then the, uh, minor, the, the tw minus 25 millimeter waste was sent through a high-pressure grinding rolled crusher to ensure excellent liberation of the small diamonds from the kimberlite and then the small diamonds were covered in a dense media separator that operated in a very narrow range, namely one to six millimeters. It was a very efficient system. It worked extremely well, and they produced a very rigorous and strictly controlled bulk sample for this kimberlite. Notably in the, the Fortalicorn kimberlites, this, the, it has a what we refer to as a unique diamond population with a coarse size frequency distribution and the opportunity in the future to recover very large stones. The most valuable diamond recovered in bulk sampling was a, a, a stone just under 12 carats, D color in, in uh, its manifestation. It's a beautiful white stone and it has a, a dollar per carat value of about over $11,000 a carat. But in addition to that, the small diamonds in the Fortala corn are also unusually valuable. And Rio Tinto, with their construction of this processing plant, was very um, conscious that they wanted to recover the small diamonds in a very rigorous way, which they successfully achieved. The smalls are usually valued at between uh, 5 and $10 a carat overall, and in the case of the Fort Holocorn, that number goes up very significantly to 20 or between 30 and $50 a carat, and in some cases, maybe more than 50 So we are now going to integrate the trench cutter diamond, having received the project back from Rio Tinto. Rio Tinto has elected not to continue with this project for a variety of reasons, mostly uh, directions taken at a corporate level into metals and other types of mining. And we have received the project back and we are about to embark, embark on a, re, a revised mineral resource, which we aim to publish by the end of uh, June this year. Notably, we can integrate the trench cutter diamonds with previous underground bulk sampling and large diameter drilling diamond parcels that we have from the past. And particularly in the smalls, there will be a significant strengthening of the grade and the, and the size frequency curve that we have to estimate the value of these kimberlites. And we assume we don't want to and get too ahead of ourselves in what we anticipate, but we assume that there will be a positive increase in the mineral resource estimate when we are able to publish it and complete the work uh, in late June. So we are actively pursuing this, and certainly we are doing everything in our power to ensure that this resource is very rigorously controlled. We have employed uh, a very experienced diamond sorter that we have on staff in Saskatoon, Nelson Karoon. He is hard at work in the valuation and the sorting of this extensive parcel. He has done very pivotal work in that area as well. We are using the services of a very uh, expert statistician in Australia for the, uh, the statistics behind the resource estimate this has been conducted in a very uh, careful manner, and we look forward to the results, and we hope that we will see a significant increase in the resource number. George, thank you so much for uh, for that overview. Uh, certainly uh, 
interesting history behind the project uh, and some exciting work ahead. Uh, you touched on a couple of um, pieces of work that the Rio Tinto had done at the project. Uh, you know, the bulk sampling, the building of the processing facility. Uh, is is there any other work that has been done by Rio Tinto that you know, now set you up for success uh, when you, now that you have your full ownership of that? So the, our most recent news release, which was published on Monday. Uh, and obviously that is available online through our website. You can see more detailed account of uh, what they did and particularly some of the highlights. But there, there are a few points that I would like to emphasize is firstly, their bulb sampling program, which was restricted to the star Kimberlite, was very successful and the operation of their plant uh, puts us in very good stead for our future resource estimate. Um, in addition, they did what they referred to. They had a separate team of geologists called the Orbit Exploration Team. They looked. The Fort de la Corne is a very extensive area of kimberlites. All the kimberlites of, very, uh, uh, of any significance are held under claim, 100% owned by Star Diamond Corporation. And in among those kimberlites, the Orbit Team focused on uh, they wanted to prioritize the prospectivity of kimberlites that had not had extensive work done in those uh, outside Star and Orion South, which are at the southeast end of this chain of kimberlites. So some 10 kilometers or so to the northwest, there is uh, the Orion North kimberlite, which has an enormous volume of kimberlite. It, we, it, we cannot refer to it as ore yet because we haven't done a resource estimate on it, but we do know that it contains diamonds. We have confirmed that with large diameter drilling, and we have published some results recently that show there are there is again a coarse size frequency distribution, and lo and behold, that coarse size frequency distribution is driven by a very high percentage of type 2a diamonds you might say well what are type 2a diamonds these are diamonds that have no nitrogen that substitutes or boron that substitutes in the carbon structure crystal structure that makes up diamond and so type 2a diamonds are very rare and most diamond mines produce fewer than two percent type 2a diamonds However, we also know that of the biggest diamonds ever found in history, such as the Cullinan Stone and um, 3,106 carats, the Koh i Noor, which is about 700 carats originally, uh, those stones are all type 2A diamonds, and they can be the most perfect gin and tonic white, they can be brownish, and they can, in very rare cases, be pink, which then creates enormous value. So certainly in our in few in future we would see that the economics of the project will be driven ultimately by the by the mining of these large stones. So one of the exercises that Rio Tinto did was that they they looked at a mining scenario and looked very carefully at the statistics of the size frequency distribution. And they said if you, if you wanted to get 100, how much rock would you have to extract to get a 100 carat stone? And the, the answer they got out of their statistical exercise was 222,000 tons of kimberlite, and that would yield one plus hundred carat stone, which is known as an exceptional diamond, plus it would earn would produce about a hundred or a hundred and one, uh, to be more specific from the actual exercise, uh, specials which are plus ten point eight carat stones. So there are only two mines in the world that produce uh, uh, exceptional diamonds on a monthly basis, and that is. Letseng in Lesotho, run by Gem Diamonds, and Karoi in Botswana, run by Lucaro. Um, they also produce an extensive number of, of specials, but uh, exceptional diamonds are very rare. There are two other 
uh, Kimberlites, namely Matai in Lesotho and Cullinan in South Africa that produce specials on a more or less, an, sorry, exceptionals on a more or less annual basis. So these, Rio showed that you would have to take out 222,000 tons. So how long does that take you? Well, we would anticipate that our future plant would run at 45,000 tons a day. So you can see that that's essentially only about five days of production. So we would like to think that we could see an exceptional stone every week plus a uh, uh, hundred specials, which would certainly, those kind of statistics really have a dramatic effect on the economics of the project because as diamonds rise in carat weight, so their value increases exponentially. Uh, also from this work that Rio did, we there are, um, let me just see, they, they confirm certainly the abundance of type 2As. The work on Orion North showed that one of the dominant kimberlite units in Orion North uh, produced 63 type 2As. That's a, a percentage that's unheard of anywhere. Obviously, it's an early grade sample. We need to do some additional work there. But Star and Orion South will be the Kimberlites where a mine we anticipate will commence. But certainly there is an opportunity for the future to develop Orion North. And another exercise that Rio did, they looked at the ore volume. They made some assumptions about the economics of Orion North in a very uh, careful way. And they showed that they could prepare a mine with a 72-year mine life and you would produce um, diamonds for almost all of that time every year from starting with Orion South, then Star, and then Orion North. And remembering that Orion North has some 500 million tons of kimberlite. It's a huge body. So we're talking of a future project where we can probably have decades of mining. And we would like to think that within four or five years, we could have shovels in the ground and be underway. And I guess that's a, a good segue into the next point, George. So, uh, you know, looking ahead, you mentioned uh, an economic uh, assessment, or sorry, or a resource estimate coming out uh, next month in June of 2024. Um, you know, between now and, and uh, as you say, your know, shovels in the ground, uh, what, what will be some key milestones and, and what are some, some signs that uh, you know, you're on track to, to hit those milestones? So the, the, the resource estimate is very important for, obviously, in order to build a mine, you have to complete a feasibility study. But it's, it's not a process that happens overnight, but... We must remember that we have done a lot of work in the past and we can build on that work. We can bring it up to modern uh, pricing and make sure that we have our numbers correct. So the, the way forward is to complete the resource estimate. That provides the foundation on which to build a pre-feasibility study. We are of the strong opinion that the pre-feasibility study can proceed quickly uh, and get done uh, early ne next year. And thereafter, the feasibility study would proceed very quickly. There is no additional field work that needs to take place for the pre-feasibility study to be completed. The pre-feasibility study, however, may make recommendations for some additional work that possibly could include some geotechnical drilling. But other than that, we believe that we have a vast trove of information, both from our past work and from the work conducted in the more recent past by Rio Tinto, on which to build this. We have already contacted the appropriate consultants for the team that will conduct the pre-feasibility study, and they have past experience of the project, so we believe it can proceed quickly. Well, George, sounds like uh, there's an exciting future for Star Diamond and excited myself to see uh, those results come out 
uh, next month in June. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. <laughs>